This is a beginner's guide to APU overclocking for gaming performance. And the system I show you here will work for any Ryzen G series. We'll look at RAM and iGPU overclocking step by step. However, I've made videos that will give you all the prerequisite knowledge you need before starting overclocking. I'll put links to the playlist and videos into the description. I will show you the process using my Ryzen 5600G and a rather old DDR4 2666 RAM kit. I got excellent results without squeezing it super hard. But before we get into the how-to, we need to discuss expectations and the dangers. Overclocking and increasing voltage will generally void your warranties. The only truly safe voltages are the stock voltages validated by the manufacturer. Anything beyond that is various levels of safe and unsafe. Don't look to me for taking responsibilities. The voltages I will use in this tutorial are not crazy high but you should do your own research. That said, you can still get good gains if you decide not to increase voltages. For most, a reasonable expectation is a gain of 10 to 20% over your current XMP profile and stock VEGA frequency. And it primarily depends on what you can get out of your RAM. The most important thing is that your system is completely stable. Do you know how many FPS an unstable system gets? Zero, that's how many. So what's first? Vega overclocking or RAM overclocking? Neither. First, you should run a game benchmark so you can compare before and after. I recommend Shadow of Tomb Raider. The benchmarks included in the free demo version on Steam, and many of you already have the game anyway because it was free on Epic. We will start with RAM overclocking and only then touch the Vega frequency when we know that our RAM is rock stable. We don't overclock the CPU, it's more than powerful enough as it is. If you want to, and your chipset supports it, you can enable PBO. This will unlock the power limit and give you a little more room for overclocking. But again, this technically avoids your warranty. Also, if you are using the stock cooler and live in a hot place, your CPU may get toasty. Although in my testing, it was okay at lowish ambient temperatures. Before starting the manual overclocking process, you must first decide that you are comfortable increasing the GFX core and DRAM voltages. Both can affect your RAM overclock and GFX core voltage will limit your Vega OC. The default GFX voltage for Ryzen 5600G is precisely 1. I will use 1.2 volts in this tutorial, which is a good amount but not excessive based on my own experience and research. Again, I don't know what is safe. It's your hardware and it's your responsibility to decide what you'll do with it. In my estimation, GFX core voltage will only affect your RAM OC if you try to run insanely fast RAM, like DDR4-4600. It's because your RAM, the memory control clock UCLK and the Infinity Fabric clock FCLK should always run at a 1 to 1 to 1 ratio. Getting UCLK and FCLK to run very fast may require increased SOC voltage, which is shared with the GFX voltage. Leaving FCLK and UCLK in auto usually works and the system will run a 1 to 1 to 1 ratio, but you can manually set it if you want to make sure it is so. Keep in mind, DDR4-3200 runs at 1600 MHz, so in that case you'd set FCLK to 1600. If you set your RAM to 3800, then set FCLK to 1900. Always precisely half. If you want to set it manually, you must adjust it every time you change your memory speed. DDR4 voltages are between 1.2 and 1.5 volts. I'm usually not shy about pushing another 50 millivolts over XMP, but again, you don't have to, and how much benefit you get from this depends on the exact memory chips on your RAM. I strongly recommend you don't go past 1.5 volts in any case. I'll stick with an extra 50 millivolts over XMP for this tutorial. We now look at the beginner friendly way to overclock RAM. I cover everything step by step and you will see a straightforward method is critical here. Go to your BIOS and locate your advanced memory settings. You'll know you found the right option if your screen looks similar to this. I can see all my timings here. They were set by enabling the XMP. Don't worry, we won't bother with most of them. We only mess with CAS, RCD, RP, RAS and RC. We have to increase these timings before increasing our memory clock and later we'll tighten the timings again. It's unlikely you have the same figures here as I do, and that doesn't matter. We are increasing all of them a bit now, somewhere around 4 and 8 ticks. I went with a cast of 22, both RCD timings on 24 and RP on 24, plus 6 ticks across the board, 
increasing RAS by 7 from 35 to 42, and RC by 3 from 53 to 56. You can go a little looser if you want, but I think you shouldn't bother with anything past CAS of 24, RCTs and RP of 26, RAS of 50 and RC of 60. I created a spreadsheet to keep track of my testing. I suggest you do the same or note down your progress. After increasing our timings, we save the profile and restart the system into the BIOS. We save the profile because at some point our system will fail to start up while increasing RAM frequency. Then we can reset CMOS and load the profile, so we won't have to dial in the loosened timings again. First, let's take a tiny step to see how it feels. We increase our RAM frequency by the smallest possible amount over the XMP setting. On my RAM kit, that's 1366 MHz or 2733 MHz transfers. Save and exit BIOS. If all goes well, we go straight back into the BIOS. At this point, there is no reason to log into the operating system. When you reach the login screen, you can restart the system right away and go back into the BIOS. It's time to take larger steps. Overclocking RAM is a lengthy process, and if we keep increasing by only 33 MHz every time, it will take forever. I suggest you increase by about 100 MHz on each attempt. If you start with slowish RAM like me, you may go for 200 MHz increases. So I tried 3000 and my system posted. Then I tried 3400 and my system posted. Then I got adventurous and tried 3800, which for a 2666 kit is insane. And I got what I deserved, a black screen. This will happen to you as well. Even if you take smaller steps, no reason to panic. All we have to do in this situation is to reset our BIOS. Once back in the BIOS, we simply reload our latest profile. My system crashed at 3800 but posted at 3400, so logically I tried the in-between value, 3600. Same result, black screen. So I reset the BIOS and loaded the profile. At this point I could have tried smaller steps, but honestly, I'm pretty happy with 3400 already, so I didn't see any reason to squeeze those last few megahertz out of it. We have to keep in mind that we're only testing for post, we haven't tested our system stability at all. And that's what we do at this point. So I reverted to my previous value of 3400, which allowed me to post the system successfully. We log back into the operating system and run our basic stability test. Then we should test the game for about 10 minutes. And if neither of those tests fails, we should run memtest86. It will take about 2 hours for 16 gigs of RAM. Which may seem like a lot of time, but it's a small price to pay compared to losing all the progress we make past this point if late it turns out to be unstable. If memtest fails, then decrease the speed a bit and try memtest again. If it succeeds at a reduced speed, you can try an in-between value again with memtest. My RAM passed memtest 86 at 3400, so I moved on to timings. We repeat the same process with timings, starting with CAS. Now we reduce CAS in steps of 2 ticks until the system no longer posts. Then revert to the previous value. So first I try CAS 20, then CAS 18 which to my surprise still posted. I tried CAS16, but the system wouldn't turn on anymore. After resetting CMOS and reverting to CAS18, I booted into the operating system. I ran my basic stability test using Intel Burn Test and played the demanding game for 10 minutes. This was successful, no errors, no crashes. If this goes wrong, increase CAS and try again. But if it's okay, you can run memtest86. You can skip memtest, but you may have to do more backtracking later. Now repeat this process for each timing. RCD, RP, RAS and RC. Load the timing by 2 until no post. Revert to the previous value on no post and test. On test success, move on to the next timing, but increase the timing and retest on test failure. You don't have to rush this process. Do as much testing as you want after working on each timing. You're giving yourself a stable setting you can revert to when you get lost. As you can see on my test log, I got real lucky or really unlucky depending on your point of view. I couldn't get any of the timings much lower and then up with 18, 24, 24, 42. For example, I've encountered an error while testing 18, 22, 24 in Cyberpunk 2077. Then I even got this blue screen when shutting the system down. I was done relatively quickly and my final memtest 86 run and gameplay testing were successful. I didn't try in steps of one tick. For example, I didn't test RCD of 23. If you want to get the absolute best out of your kit, you should do that. When you've settled on your RAM overclock, save a profile in the BIOS. You may also want to note the exact timings down or take a picture with your phone. This will be handy if you lose your profile and need to reset or update the BIOS. I think by now you know why XMP exists. RAM overclocking is a ton of work. In contrast, overclocking the integrated graphics is very simple. If you followed along, you've already increased your GFX voltage or decided against doing so. 
In either case, you can increase your Vega call frequency. The default value for the Ryzen 5600G is 1900MHz. On the 5700G it's 100MHz more, and on the previous generation chips it's much lower. You should increase core frequency gradually in steps of about 50MHz, but your first step may be 200MHz. I start at 2100 on the 5600G if you've increased voltage, and if you didn't, begin at 2000. After each step, stress test the GPU with Heaven Benchmark. Watch out for artifacts and crashes. You should stress test it at least 15 minutes after each increment. When you reach a point where you see artifacts on the screen or your system crashes to a black screen, go back and revert to the previous stable clock. Again here, you may try smaller steps, for example if 2350 failed, you could try 2325. Note that you usually don't have to reset CMOS, even if you black screen. Test again by gaming on it when you reach your maximum core clock. Ultimately, I ended up with 3400 RAM at 18, 24, 24, 42 and a Vega core clock of 2300 MHz, which allowed me to score over 5700 frames rendered in Shadow of the Tomb Raider. That's over 20% extra performance compared to my RAM kits XMP and stock Vega frequency. If this video was helpful, consider giving it a like so more people can find it. And let me give you one more bit of advice. Don't rush this. Slow and steady wins the overclocking race. Good luck. I hope I'll see you in the next one.